Okay, well, let's hope that the, the sound works now. All right, you, you really should, if you're looking at this now, we're looking at lecture number five. So please make sure that you have looked at the previous lectures, which are three and four. You can find them over there somewhere on the right on YouTube. But so that you understand what we're doing, we're still doing this idea that we're learning a language with accounting here. So we've got this idea of debits. Debits go on the left. Debits are your assets, your losses, and your expenses. The things that go on the right is basically everything else. So the liabilities of the organization, uh, the income of the organization, and so on. You also need to understand before you start this, the business entity concept. So with the business entity concept, we only show those items in the accounts that actually relate to the business. Right, that's our background. So what are we doing? Right, remember that what you're doing is you are recording financial transactions. You then, as you go through this, will be grouping those transactions together and presenting them in a certain way. You are going to be there for recording the transactions. So you'll see we've got three examples here and all we're doing now is we're doing examples. So for the transactions, we will record them as debits and credits. Then we will calculate how much cash we've got. Now go back and have a look at the lecture if you don't understand why that's different from accruals. So watch these things from the start. Yeah. And you'll see what is the accruals basis and what does the accruals basis mean? So what do we include as an expense and so on? And then we'll go on and do the profit and loss account and then the statement of financial position. OK, so that's what we're going to be doing. And we're just doing it three times now. So I'm going to work all of these for you and you get to sit and watch. Sounds good, doesn't it? OK, so we have a guy here who is called Luke. Right. The first thing, again, that we are doing is that we are recording the transactions for Luke's little business. So everything that goes on the left, which is a debit, must be matched with everything which goes on the right, which is a credit. OK, right. Again, those things, what is a debit and what is a credit, are actually the hardest things in the whole of accountancy to understand. The easiest thing to do is just get used to the idea of discussing them and talking about them. And then you'll find after a while it, it comes naturally. So we're now going to record the transactions. Everything goes on the left, must go on the right. The concept of duality. So he has borrowed 100,000. Uh, it doesn't say where it's come from, doesn't matter. Let's assume it's the bank. So he borrows. So that will be debit because he's borrowed the money. His cash will go up uh, 100,000. So we debit cash 100,000. De cash is an asset. Remember, your debits are your. Assets, losses, and expenses. Cash is an asset, so your cash will go up. To make a debit, or to make an asset go up, you debit it. And the corresponding credit will be not the cash, it will be credit for some form of a loan account. Okay? So therefore, we have debit cash, credit the loan. Transaction number one. Transaction number two, he purchases a shop. The shop is an asset, so we will debit our shop. And we will credit cash. 90,000. The two numbers must balance, 90,000. Right, cash is an asset, so we said that was a debit, but it's only a debit when it's going up. When it's going down, it becomes a credit. So to make a debit balance go down, you credit it. So we've credited cash, 90,000. And that's the easiest way to remember this when you're first starting, is look at the cash account. Cash goes up, debit it. Cash goes down, we credit it. So that tells you that's what the debit and the credit are in those scenarios. What goes the other side? Right, we've purchased some furniture. The furniture cost us 10,000. So furniture will be debit balance because furniture is an asset. And again, assuming everything for now is our cash, our cash will go down. How much do we say it was 10,000? So your cash has gone down by 10,000. Okay, assets gone up, 
And in this case, assets gone up, which is furniture, so we've debited it, and assets gone down, which is cash, so we've credited. Right now, he borrows 10,000, so it's the same as the first entry, yeah? Except now, obviously, this is debit balance, debit cash, because cash is going to go up, and it's 10,000. And what goes up as well, our credit, will be uh -huh, to our loan account. Your cash has gone up, which is your asset, debit it. Your liability has gone up, so your credit has gone up. So notice there, you have an asset. If your asset, cash, goes up, you debit it. If your asset goes down, you credit it. Loan is a credit balance because it's a liability of the organization. So you will credit the loan. That makes the loan go up. If we repay some of that loan, then the loan will come down, so we will debit it. So therefore, if you repay some of the loan, you will credit cash and you will debit the loan. Right, he buys 50 phones for 20 each. And what's two, sorry, 200 each. So he buys 10, that's the 10,000, yeah? So we will debit purchases. Make sure I get my number right. Is it 10,000? So it's 50, 50 times two is 100, 10,000. So we debit our purchases. And let's assume that we credit cash. So he's paid us 10,000. Has he got enough cash to do that? We debited 100, then 100 went out. Yep, he's got enough to do that. So therefore, now what's happened is we've, we've made some purchases. These are mobile phones. So Luke obviously sells mobile phones. And he's purchased 50 of them for 200 bucks each. Now what's going to happen is that he will sell all of them for 300. So 300 is 15,000. So he will sell all of them. Let's assume again it's for cash for 15,000. And we will credit sales. Right, now just the way that we've represented that. There's no concept here of touching any stock or inventory accounts. When we purchased them, we debited purchases. When we sold them, we credited sales. And so that's how we're going to work it here. Right, those are the one, two, three, four, five, six entries that this guy, who is Luke, has gone through during this process. So in the last slide, what we looked at therefore was the debits and credits. We saw that we had six transactions, and with those transactions therefore, for each transaction, there was a debit and a credit, and as, as the thing showed, the debits and the credits have to actually balance. All we're doing now with this slide, therefore, is we're calculating what is the cash balance in the organization. Now, remember, with some of these things, you're going to find that uh, the cash is different from the profit and so on. And, and in fact, it will be, even in this example. So when we borrowed 100,000, what we saw was that we had 100,000 coming into the shop, uh, into the shop, into the business. So we borrowed 100,000. You had a debit to cash, and there was a credit to the loan account. He purchased a shop. So what we've got is we've got 90,000 going out of the business. Notice that when we show a minus number here, we put it in brackets. Then he spent 10,000 on fixtures and fittings. So he received 1,000. Then when he received 1,000, Oh, sorry, he received 100,000 of a loan and he spent the whole 100,000. So now he goes back to the bank, much like most people go to his mum, and he borrows 10,000. Right, he bought the phones, they were bought at 200. So therefore, now what happens? We get the 10,000 going out of the business. In fact, here, that's a mistake, isn't it? When he borrowed this, 10,000 came into the business. Now he sells them for 15,000 and he receives 15,000. So what we get, therefore, is we get that his balance on his bank account at the end of the period is 15,000. 
Okay, right. I hope that's fairly straightforward. Assuming that you have a job or some source of income and assuming you have a bank account, that should be fairly straightforward. You borrow the money from the bank and what happens is, is 100,000 comes into your account. You spend it on a shop and fixtures and fittings, right? Fixtures and fittings, these are just the things that go into a shop. So if you're in a shop, therefore there will be such things as shelves. If it's a little shop selling newspapers, there might be a fridge or a freezer that has some ice creams in it. Those things are just called fixtures and fittings. So he spends his 100,000 on the shop and the fixtures, then he borrows another 10,000 and he uses that 10,000 to purchase some stock. He's obviously going to sell fast. Right, notice though that when we when we did that with the debits and credits, we just call these things purchases. Then what happens is he sells all of them. So his cash balance at the end of the piece is 15,000. Okay, so what we did was we recorded the transactions, and then the next thing we did was we calculated what was the value of the cash. Now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate how much profit this guy's made, uh, whose name is Luke. So we're just going to fill in these little sections here. So have a look on your screen here. Oh, it's going to appear all over there. That's a bit better. Right, the very last transaction was that he made a sale. Now, he made here a sale and it was for cash. So it's quite clear, I think, that this is a sale. And the value of the sale was 15,000. Please remember that even if he'd made the sale on credit, so he hadn't got the cash yet, and that was due to come later, it would still be recognized as a sale. Remember our accruals concept, Sally on the Metro, when the sale is made, when the other, when the person, the customer takes delivery of the goods, even though, even if you haven't got the cash at that point, a sale has still actually been made. So your sales here are 15,000. Right, your opening inventory, is the value of your inventory at the start of the period. So let's assume that this is January. How many phones did he have in stock in his warehouse on the 1st of January? Well, the value is zero. So his opening inventory is zero. His purchases were 10,000. Remember again, here his purchases were all for cash, but even if these had been purchases on credit, as long as he's made that purchase and he's taken delivery of the goods, then we will show here. It's not important when the money moves, it's important when the purchase actually takes place. And the purchase is when you take delivery of the goods. His closing inventory represents the number or the value of the telephones he has in stock at the end of the period. Well, he doesn't have any because it told you in the question that he'd sold them all. So his opening and his closing inventory are both zero. Therefore, his cost of sales. Remember what you're doing. You, your cost of sales is what is the cost of those items which I have sold? What have you sold? What you had at the start plus what you bought minus what's left at the end. Here, there was nothing at the start, nothing at the end. So it was just what he bought. So his cost of sales is 10,000. And that gives him a gross profit of $5,000. Again, when you come later, you're going to find that he has other costs. So he's going to have things like depreciation, which is a spreading of the cost of his fixtures and fittings. He's going to have electricity and gas and workers. And these are all going to come below this. But for now, we're just looking at gross profit. So his gross profit is 5,000. Please don't forget that number because that profit represents a liability of the business to the owner. So that has to go in the statement of financial position, the balance sheet, which is coming next. Don't forget it, otherwise it won't balance by that sum. So now we have our statement of financial position. Now have a look at what we've done here. We show this as like a photograph. So it's like a snapshot of the business at any period in time. And that's why we always show it with a date that shows at, because it shows the date at which prepare, we are preparing it. Now here, you'll also see that we start, in terms of the presentation of this thing, with the assets. So here you've got your assets. So we've talked about our assets already. Now look at the order in which we put them in. The, the assets that we put at the top of this are those assets which are going to be with us for a long period of time. 
So you'll see those called fixed assets or more correctly nowadays called non-current assets. But these things come first. So we had a shop. Have a look at your slides. Remember, you can download the slides from my website. So therefore, you've got your shop and your shop cost you 90,000. In addition to this, you have your fixtures. These are your things that go in your shop and these things cost 10,000. So therefore, in your balance sheet, in your statement of financial position at this stage, you have your shop and your fixtures with a cost of, of 100,000. Right. In addition to that, you also have your cash. Now, notice how cash I've shown slightly separately because cash is what we call a current asset. So it's not, if you think about cash, okay, cash itself will be in the business forever, but the actual cash which is in the till, or the actual cash which is in the bank will be coming and going. So we show this as a current asset. And your amount of cash, please let me hope I've got this right, to remember back to the slide now, was 15,000. So the total value of your assets, therefore, is 115. Clearer. But the total value of your assets is 115,000. Being 100,000 of long term assets, of non current assets, which is correctly what they're called, the shop and the fixtures, and 15,000, which is the cash. Right now, that has to balance out with the credit balances. So here you have your loans, and your loans are, oh, I've got it to get this correct. Are 110,000, being the 100,000 which was the first loan, and then the 10,000 which was the second. Now notice here how we've aggregated the loans, so you get this idea of 110,000 being the two loans added together. Finally, your profit, because your profit is a liability of the business; it's a liability to the business owners. So therefore, we recognise that as a liability as well. That gives us 115. I'm not sure if it's going to show on 115,000. I fear that this, I'm writing 115,000. In fact, I've got a better idea. I'm not sure if it's going to appear on the screen or not. Let's see what I can do. What we will do then is let's just do view over there. And then just notice that the total here is 115,000. And we're going to put that into bold. So there you have it. I'm looking a bit windswept. I've, we just did, we did Luke, or I did Luke rather last week, and so I was just taking the weekend off. But the kids have just gone off to school, take the dog out for a walk. Been a bit windswept out there in the uh, Northumberland countryside today. But what you've just done there is Luke. You saw the individual transactions. Once you saw the transactions, you saw that we calculated our cash. From our cash, you saw that we calculated our profit. And then in addition to that, we had this thing called the statement of financial position, or what you'll find that many, many people call um, the balance sheet. And once you've got those things, that's it. And that's all preparation of a set of accounts is. We're coming back to this idea of debits and credits, your debits go on the left, and just learn them. Learn where your cash goes. Debits are assets, losses, and expenses. And credits are everything else. So we're going to be doing loads and loads of these as we go through the course as well. Right, now we're just going to go on and do another one, and it's the same thing. What are we doing? We're recording the transactions, transactions recorded in two places, then you cash your profit and your balance sheet. And just learn these things, and as you come through them, you'll find, remember, you're learning a language. So the more that you speak the language, the more that you'll get used to it, and it will just come. Okay, debits, assets, losses, expenses. Credits, as far as you're concerned, everything else. If you have an asset and you want it to go up, you debit it, it goes on the left. If you have an asset and you want it to go down, you credit it and it goes on the right. If you have an expense, you want it to go up, you debit it. If you want it to go down, you credit it. If you have a loan, the credit balance goes on the right. If you want that loan to go up, you credit it. If you want it to go down, you debit it. Okay, just keep remembering those phrases and it'll come over time. 
Okay, so let's press on with another of these little examples. And this example here is called Kelvin. So Kelvin has certain transactions. So we're going to do the debits and credits. Do the remember this is the concept of duality. So he has borrowed two hundred thousand in cash. Right, cash is an asset. I've done this before. An asset is those things that you will use in your in your um, business for some considerable period of time. So Kelvin has an asset. Cash is the asset. So therefore, we will debit cash two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And the business has a liability. It doesn't say who the loan is from, but let's assume it's from his mum or his dad or somewhere. But it's going to be paid. It's not going to be paid. It's not a liability. So therefore, we will credit the liability. And let's just call it loan. Let's call that. I've got 200,000 there. Right, now that's something that you've seen in all of these questions. So cash is an asset. So we debit it because the cash is going up. To make an asset go up, you debit it. Assets, those things we will keep in our business. For some considerable period of time. Try to remember that with cash as well. If cash is going up, you debit it. If cash is going down, you credit it. So you, any entry with cash in, you've got one side. So you know that the other side, be it rent expense or be it wages and salaries, must must be the, the opposite. Yeah? So we debit cash here, two hundred thousand, and we credit the loan to represent the fact that we have this loan in the business. Then he buys a store. You can see that this came from an American book. Yeah. So a store is the same as a shop. A shop is an asset. It's something that is his and it will be used. So we will debit, what will we call it? Right, you can call these things anything you want. So I've called it property, but you can call it store if that may. I just don't like the Americanism, that's all. So we we'll call it debit property, debit shop, debit store, debit building, whatever you want to call the damn thing. It's, it doesn't matter. And, and all your clients all have different names for these things as well. So therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to debit that 150000 I assume that he paid for it in cash. It doesn't actually tell you. So let's assume cash. We'll find out in a minute if it doesn't work. So we will credit cash 150000 In real life, of course, you'll know because in real life, you'll see it coming out the bank statement. And in exams, if you're going to do ACCA or something, they'll tell you this stuff in the exam. We've got 15,000 on fixtures and fittings. Right, fixtures and fittings are those things that go inside the shop. So these things are the shelves, or if it's a newspaper shop, the freezers, or whatever else. The guy is uh, selling toys, yeah. So these will be stands for the toys to sit on. But we'll just call these things fixtures. They are what we call a fixed asset, or property, plant, and equipment. Get my number of noughts right, 15,000. Now let's assume that he's paid cash for all of this stuff as well. Cash in the middle is 15,000. So, fixtures are an asset. To make assets go up, we debit them. So you debit the asset 15,000. Assuming he's paid cash here, therefore your cash has gone down 15,000. Right, delivery van. So he's bought himself a delivery van. So you can call it van, or you can call it vehicles, or you can call it anything you like. And let's make an assumption that he has paid cash for that. Consistent by using big letters. I tell my daughter, 20,000. Your cash has gone down 20,000. You've got an asset. The asset is the vehicle, and that's gone up. So how much has he spent now? He got 200,000 in, and he spent 185,000. He borrows. 25,000. So we will debit cash. 25,000. And we will credit loan. 25,000. Right now, can you notice in this question, therefore, that at this point in time, I think the guy's got an overdraft, doesn't he? He got 200,000 in and he spent 185, which gives him 15. He's now got cash up to 40. But now you can see that he's purchasing toys. So we will debit purchases 50,000. And we will credit cash 50. So now Kelvin, at this point in time, he's actually got an overdraft. Yeah. So Kelvin actually has an overdraft. 
So therefore, the bank presumably are going to let him go into debt at this point because he now actually owes £10,000. Now, luckily for him, he sells them. So we've assumed that all of this is on a cash basis. So therefore, now he's actually got some cash yeah, and he's got credit for sales of 75000 now, as a bookkeeper, if you go into debt and the bank allows you to go into debt, it actually makes no difference whatsoever to you as a bookkeeper. When you're starting to lose your, when you're starting to use your skills as an accountant, though, you need to point out to the business owners that at that point they're going to go overdrawn, overdrawn at the bank, and so therefore they need to agree that overdraft with the bank in advance. Okay, so Kelvin, now um, we've done the debits and credits. So all that you're doing with this is you're calculating how much cash he's got at the end of the period. And you can do this using the debits and the credits. He started with nothing at the start of the building. Every time you see a debit, it's plus, And every time you see a credit, it's minus. So he received 200,000, which was the cash from the loan. Yeah, so we debited cash and we credited the loan. He then purchased his shop. Now notice that we show in brackets because it's a minus, so we've got the right number of noughts, 150,000, that's correct, yeah. He purchased some fixtures and fittings, which were 15 grand, and he also spent 20 grand on a van. Right, so at that point in time, he has, if I calculate correctly, 15,000 in the bank. He then borrows 25,000 which gives him 40. Now, again, as we talked about on the last slide, this is the point when you as an accountant to show the value in your job would point out when he's going to make the purchases, he's only actually got now 40,000 in the bank. Whatever, he goes ahead and buys 50,000. So presumably he has an overdraft facility with the bank or he has access to 10,000 from somewhere. Because at this point in time now, he has minus 10,000 in the bank. He then receives 25,000 assuming that these things are all for cash yeah so therefore on that basis he will have 65,000 in cash and with all of these examples assuming that is at the end of the month okay I think I think that's fairly straightforward what, what is quite important though or what I want you to get at this moment with your stage of development is that you understand that where we show a plus here, and I hope it's obvious to you that it's a plus, but that was a debit. And that where it's a minus here, it's a credit. And that's how you can calculate that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate Kelvin's profit. Um, I've given you the template that you use here. Remember again that we refer back to Sally. Right, everything here, he's both made the sale and received the cash. But if he's made a sale, whether he's received the cash or not, you, you would actually show it. So now what we show here is in his sales, his sales for the period of 75,000. His opening inventory was zero, and his closing inventory was zero as well. His purchases were 50,000. So it's cost of sales. Remember, your cost of sales is the cost of what you have sold. You haven't really seen opening and closing inventory yet, but you will in real life. It's your what you've sold is your opening inventory plus your purchases minus your closing inventory. So here, nice and simple, your cost of sales is 50,000. So your profit, which is your sales received minus what it costs you to buy those goods, and we'll come back to that much later in the course, is 25,000. And so, so important is that you remember that when you do your balance sheet, that profit of 25,000 is a liability of the business to Kelvin. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the statement of financial position. Now, let's just have a little look at the way we set this thing out. We've got up here, this, this point up here, we've got this, and this, as I'm highlighting now, is a heading. So property, plant, and equipment is the first heading that you would expect to see. So now you're getting into the format of these statements. 
And you can see that what we've got here is the store, the fixtures, and the van. So the store cost the guy 150, one, two, three. I hope my maths is correct. The fixtures cost the guy 15,000, and the van was 20,000. So have a look at your debits and credits. These are the debit balances, the debit balances on those accounts. So we spent 150, 15, and 20,000. So you lift from your debits and credits, right? And these things are called non-current assets because these things are expected to be used for significant periods of time within the business. So significant periods of time within the business. So when you have a shop, you would expect it to last a, a significant number of years, and even the van. Right down here, you have your cash, and your cash is called a current asset. And your cash, if you remember, was 65,000. It's called a current asset because the actual physical money that you've got in your till or the money that you've got in your bank will, will kind of go round, but it's there and it's going, the money which is actually there is going to be used fairly quickly. But you will receive new kinds of money. Right, the loan that the guy had, well, let's just, let's just add that up first of all. So we've got 100, uh, oh, it's 165, 185, so we've got 260,000, is that right? 165, 185, 250,000. The 250,000, that number represents simply the total of all of our assets being 185,000 being our non-current assets and 65,000 being our current. The balance on the loan account is 225,000 being the first loan of 200,000 and the second loan of 25,000. And then here you have your profit, 25,000. Again, which gives us a total on the credit balances of 250. Okay, do your best to understand where those numbers come from. But again, you're speaking a language. So try to do your best to get your head around it. As you do it more and more often, it'll get easier and easier. Me, with my bad haircut, back again. I do need to get my haircut, yeah, again. Right, you saw there for, I forgot what the guy's name was now, Kelvin. So with Kelvin, it's just more of the same and you're just seeing more transactions. We're gonna do one last one now. I might as well fill this up because I've got these examples already. And, and it's just gonna be more complicated. So the, the transaction is just getting bigger and that's all that's happening. You're learning a language, the way to do this is to repetition. We're gonna do the debits and credits, then you're gonna do the cash statement, then you're gonna do the income statement, the profit and loss account, and then you're gonna do statement and financial position. I wish it was more fun. Okay then, let's push on. Um, and we've got so many transactions, I've had to split them into two for this now then. So it should be more of the same. Before we just start, let's also just change this one to make it a bit clearer. Let's assume that this is on credit. Right, so for Charlie, therefore, he starts his business and we'll assume for this purpose that he's starting his business. So it's 200,000 of his own money. Right, is everyone okay therefore? business entity concept, when we look at the business on its own, therefore, money goes up, then we will debit cash 200,000. With that kind of money, it's very unlikely that it's actual physical cash in his shop. He's probably got it in the bank. So if you want to say debit bank, you can say debit bank 200,000. That's absolutely fine. It, 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 it does the same thing. Right, more and more uh, little concepts that are coming in now, though. Can you notice that when a business owner um, ponies up when a business owner invests his own money we don't call that a loan it has a special name and that special name is capital so what we're going to do now therefore here is we're going to credit owner's capital now what you'll actually find here 
is therefore that normally we add profit to this as well. So the capital, therefore, will be the capital he contributes plus his share of profit. So we're going to call that capital. So cash has gone up. Where does the credit go? The credit goes to capital. Here, he borrows from the bank. So once again, his cash or his bank balance, whatever you want to call it, has gone up. Whoops, cast. Getting ready for the weekend already. Right, 100,000. And this, of course, will be a loan from the bank. So now we have a loan of 100,000. Right, so we've got two different sources of cash there, two different sources of finance. One is his own money and one is money from the bank. Then he purchases it with a new store. I wish they would stop calling them stores. So we'll, oh, we'll call it store, whatever you want. Call it it's a store, it's a shop, it's a building, but it's 250,000. Yeah. Right, and he's purchased it on credit because if you're spending 250,000, it's unusual that he's going to actually use cash for that. Then we will credit some form of loan. What do we say? Well, it's 250,000. So the business has a liability of 250,000. So this is just a, a continuation of the same question. I'll just cut it on two slides because it, it starts to look very small otherwise. Right, so continuing with Charlie then, he now purchases a van. So when he purchases a van, we will, a van is an asset, so we will debit vehicle, or you can debit van, or you can call it motor car, whatever you want. But he's, he's purchased a vehicle. And let's assume that he's purchased this for cash. He's got a load of cash in his business now. So let's assume that he purchased this for cash. And then he purchases the fixtures. Here, I'll just change this. Because in real life, when you buy these things, you'll lease them or something. So they'll almost certainly be on credit in real life. So your debit is to your asset. And your debit is to fixtures. This is shelving in a shop. It's a clothes shop it's got here, yeah? And we will credit that form of a loan. Which is how much is it? It's also 20,000. So the van and the fix is 20,000 each. So therefore, you've got your vehicle and your fixtures. Then he makes some purchases. Right, please notice that purchases here, these are things which are purchases for resale. So they must be purchases for resale. And we will credit cash for 5,000 before we find out what my dog is barking at. And then finally he sells them. And this is all on credit as well. So we will debit his receivables. That's about to the dog stop barking there. And it's how much is it? 35,000. So 35,000. So purchases you've seen before. So we've got the purchases of the van on a cash basis. The fixtures were on a credit basis. So we've got a loan. He's made some purchases, so his cash has gone down. Please notice that when we use that purchases account, it's purchases of items for resale. If he's, put, if he's paying his rent, if he's paying his wages, they are not purchases. Purchasing coffee for the girls in his shop to drink, they are not purchases. They're individual expenses. So purchases is just purchases of items for resale or for, if he was in a production, so it would be items which were going into the manufacture of motor cars or whatever he's doing. Then he sells his clothes and notice that they're all sold on credit as well. So receivables, what in the olden days when I was a student is called debtors. Right now I go and find out what's wrong with my dog. Right, I hope this is relatively straightforward therefore. He injected, he paid into the business 200,000 of his own money, so therefore your cash will go up by 200,000. He borrowed 100,000 from the bank, so therefore he now has 100,000 cash in the bank as well from that. So notice that these are debits, we've debited cash 200,000, debited cash 100,000. He purchased his new store, but his new store didn't require him to spend any money currently. I mean, obviously it's on credit. He's going to have to pay for it in the future. When we do these cash flows for the next month, he's now going to have loan repayments and things coming in. But for the purposes of now, he's purchased it on credit, so there's no money there.
He has purchased his van. I told you that he purchased his van for 20 grand for cash. His fixtures were on credit, so this month, nothing there. His clothes were purchased on cash, or for cash even. So minus 5,000. And when he made his sale, he didn't get anything for that. So therefore, if my calculations are right, his cash balance at the end of the period is plus 275,000. 300, 200 capital, 100 from the bank, minus 20 for the van, and minus five for the cash. As we said, when we do it in future months, therefore, you're gonna to have to have loan repayments in there. But for the purposes of this one, He's got 275 grand left at the end of the month. So now we calculate Charlie's profit. He made sales of 35,000. Right, remember back to our little example with Sally. The fact that he hasn't received the money doesn't make any difference whatsoever. He's made a sale. The person who's bought them is legally obliged to pay for them. And so therefore we recognize the sale. So remember the double entry for this, a credit sale, is debit receivables and credit sales. So therefore we show debit receivables, credit sales. And this is the sales side of that. He's just started business, so his opening inventory is zero, and it told you in the question that he sold all of the items that he purchased as well. So therefore, his closing inventory is zero. Oops, that brackets up get my mathematical signs correct because it's opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory. So his cost of sales five thousand and so Charlie's profit is thirty thousand. Not bad for a month's work, huh? Right now we're just looking at the we're just looking at the assets of the business. So with our assets, once again, if you remember, up here we have our non-current assets. So these are our non-current assets. And these are the assets which will be used for several accounting periods in our business. We had the store, which cost us 250,000. We had the fixtures, which were 20,000. And we had the van, which was 20,000. So those are your non-current assets. Non-current assets, did I spell that correctly? And those are your assets which will be used for significant numbers of periods in your business. Down here, you have your current assets. And now, see if I can spell it right now. Now, you have two. So you have your receivables, which were 35,000. And you have your cash, which was 275,000. So the total value of your assets, therefore, is 250 plus 20 plus 20, which is 290, plus 35 for the receivables, plus 275, which gives you a total value of 600,000 in your assets. Right, so all you've got now is the liability side of the balance sheet. Now, once again, as with the assets, these are split into short term and long term. So you can't really tell from the question which is which. But when you look at the liabilities here, what I've assumed, or and probably wrongly actually, is that these things here are short term. So usually we would show up here short-term liabilities, 
Short-term liabilities are those liabilities which are due to be paid in a period of less than one year. So we've got here 100,000. Now, I'm actually guessing that in real life, these things would be long-term loans. So therefore, they need to be shown separately as long-term loans. So just bear that in mind. So you've got 100,000 for the bank. You've got 250,000 for the store. And the fixes, as I remember, were 20,000. So again, you need to look at the classification of those in real life. But for now, we're going to show them separate because they are liabilities which are due to people who are not connected to the business in the way that I've forgotten the guy's name now, Charlie is, yeah? Right, the capital we said was 200,000. So if we just add that up there, it becomes 370,000. So 370,000 is the balance on your external loans. We can show them here as long-term loans and assume there's nothing short. And then your profit was 30,000, which gives you a total on really capital, because in real life, if this guy was a sole trader, you would just add those two things together. So the total amount that you have is 600,000. All I want you to notice at the moment, therefore, is that these loans up here, which are external, are grouped together, and these things down here are grouped together. 370, just the total of those three. 230, the total of those two. And the total of the whole thing is 600,000. Okay, I hope you're starting to get a little bit of the hang of it now.